Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is the second video in my Android tutorial with Kotlin series. In the last video, we created a Hello World Android program using the kind of sample boilerplate code that Android Studio automatically created for us. In this video, we're going to examine that code and I'm going to try to explain it a little bit for anyone who's not familiar with Kotlin. And we're also going to then get rid of that and try to write our own basic Android app, which is just going to be some colored text on a colored background. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Preferences in Android Studio, Appearance and Behavior, Appearance, and change this to a light theme, because I think it is easier to read on a video. Whenever I use a light theme, I always find some people say it hurts their eyes, but I found that if I use a dark theme, there are people who can't see it. So I'm going to go with a, a light theme here. Let's zoom in a bit. So if you're coming to this from basically any language other than Kotlin, this is probably going to look pretty mysterious. I do have a separate free tutorial on Kotlin that hasn't yet progressed to looking at functions, although it might have done by the time you see this video. So the thing that's probably going to immediately strike you is that we have a lot of these, what look like named blocks of code like set content, my application theme, and so on. What you have to understand is that in Kotlin, let's say you have a function which accepts as one or more of its parameters another function. In Java, in that case, we could use a Lambda expression to supply those particular arguments. In Kotlin, if you have a function that accepts another function as its last argument, you're allowed to supply that function outside of the round brackets that you normally use for passing arguments. So a Lambda expression in Kotlin would normally have curly brackets around it. We're just moving those curly brackets outside of the normal parameter list contained in round brackets. And it ends up looking like what we have here. If you hover over set content here, the documentation should come up. And you can see that this is actually a method of component activity. And the last parameter of it is called content and that accepts a function. So this here is actually basically a Lambda expression that we are supplying as the last argument to set content. We're supplying it to the parameter named content. Let's rearrange this slightly just so I can show you what I mean. But first I'm going to attach my phone here so that I can run things on my phone. And in spite of saying that I prefer to debug using USB, now I'm having problems with my USB cable. So I'm going to connect my phone in a different way. If I click where it says medium phone API or whatever up here, I can go to per devices using Wi-Fi. I haven't got this QR code feature working, but I'm going to go to per using per encode. Now I'm going to unlock my phone. I'm going to go to the developer section that we saw in the last video. I'm going to click wireless debugging on and I'm going to tap wireless debugging and go to per device with per in code. That's giving me a code now and I'm going to click per on here since it has detected my device and type in that code from my phone which is 284715 and click per. Now we can see it says connecting to the device here and I'm going to just wait for that to finish. Here we go. And then I'm going to run my app. Okay, so that took a minute and a half to run, but finally we see the app that we had last time. Let's just rearrange this set content, put it into a form that may be slightly more familiar. So I'm going to put brackets here. We are actually calling a method of component activity. And in particular, the last parameter is called content. And in Kotlin, we can name our arguments. Let's write content equals. And what do we want to set it equal to? Well, all this stuff right here. Let's cut it from there and paste it in here. And you can see it works just the same as before. So this is a really strange syntax if you're coming from Java, but that's what this is. All of this stuff is basically a Lambda expression. So it's a function that we're passing to set content. None of this is actually running anything itself. It's just passing that stuff to set content. So set content can run it. We've got the same thing going on here. We've got a function called my application theme and we're passing 
all of this stuff to it. Here we've got the scaffold function, which allows us to create basically the outline of our application. So this allows us to add a top bar and a bottom bar to our application, among other things. Now, what actually is this part of? Well, it's part of the Jetpack Compose API that is used now for developing interfaces in Android. We used to use XML files. Now we're using code instead, which I think is an improvement because who likes XML files? This may look particularly puzzling. In this case, if you hover over scaffold here, you can see that the last argument, the parameter called content, actually accepts a function which itself accepts an argument of type padding values. And that argument is going to get passed to the code that we pass in via this. So inner padding here is part of this Lambda expression. And that's actually an argument that's going to get passed to our code by the scaffold function. Now, most of the time, you probably don't have to understand all this in detail anyway, but I just wanted to give you a bit of an overview because I do think this looks like nothing on earth if you come to this from Java, which many developers are going to do. In Android, the stuff that you see on the screen is generally what we call an activity. So that's why we've got a main activity here, which extends component activity. And component activity has an onCreate method, which will be called automatically when that activity is created. Apart from that, We've just got some functions that we've kind of defined ourselves, or rather Android Studio has. Let's zoom in a bit if I can. So you can see here, we've got a function called greeting and we're passing two arguments to it. We're naming the arguments, which Kotlin allows us to do. But this is just a function call with two arguments. And if we take a look at that greeting function, which is down here, okay, this is just something that we've defined. You can see it accepts two arguments and we're using the name argument in a bit of text, which we're creating here. So in Kotlin, you can embed text in strings using this dollar syntax. We've got a text control, which just allows us to output some text. And that's part of the Jetpack Compose API. And here we've got a little function that's just used to generate a preview. So there's a little icon up here on the right at the top of the code screen. If I click that, after waiting a little bit, I can see an extremely rough preview of how my application might look. And that can be generated without even building the program. There's also a split screen button up here, which allows us to see the preview and the code at the same time. But I'm going to go back to the code view here. I'm going to close this project view on the left by clicking the icon in the top left. So then we've got a bit more space. Computer's being really slow for some reason. And let's get rid of most of this stuff and just define some stuff ourselves. So I'm going to get rid of the stuff within set content here. And in there, I'm going to just put these two curly brackets back and we can define our own content in there. By the way, we're basically going to be making up user interfaces out of composable functions. Composable functions are just functions that have this composable annotation. However, let's get rid of this one. And I'm also going to get rid of this preview, which I don't want to use. So now we've got a pretty simple application. Let's now create our own composable function that we can use to create a bit of text on the screen. So I'm going to go down here and we'll use the annotation composable, and we'll create a function, greeting. In greeting, I'm going to put two text controls. So let's have a text control here, and I'm going to put some text here, hello. You can see that the Android Studio Editor is telling me here that this string is actually going to be supplied to a parameter called text. I can actually name this parameter explicitly if I like, just by writing text equals right here. Well, I don't have to do that because that's the first parameter to the text control anyway. Let's create another one of these and put it right underneath. And I'm going to say world here. Now we can use our composable function right within set content. So let's write greeting here. 
And then to set content, we're supplying a function, which is this. This is actually a Lambda expression. And we're supplying that as the content parameter of the set content method, which is the last parameter. This is actually called a trailing Lambda syntax, if you want to look it up in Kotlin. Now, if I run this, it's not going to look so good, but let's try it anyway. So you can actually see, if you squint a bit maybe, there is some text up there. In fact, hello and world are coming out on top of each other. Obviously, I don't want that. So to arrange them underneath each other, I'm going to use the column composable function. So I'm going to change this to say column, open the curly bracket, and I'm going to move this closing curly bracket down here. Let's indent these a bit. Save that. And if I hover over this, it's going to say unresolved reference column. I'm just going to go to import function column. And then we should get the import at the top for column. Let's take a look at the imports. So that's right here. Now I'm just going to refresh this. And now you can maybe see that hello and world are actually on top of each other. It just looks, it still looks a mess. They're really small and they're in the top left corner. Now text has a font size parameter. So I'm going to set that here. Font size equals, and I'm going to set this to 40.sp. SP stands for scalable pixels. I'm going to hover over this error that comes up and let's import extension property int.sp. So you can see hello is a lot bigger now. Let's copy this and paste it down here as well. And now we've got hello world, and at least we do have the text one underneath the other, and they are reasonably large. How do I center this in the middle of the screen? Well, we've seen that this is actually supplying the last parameter to column in this case. It's a Lambda expression, which is being supplied to the content parameter of column. But I can supply more parameters if I add the round function brackets in, which are optional otherwise. And in here, the first thing I'm going to do is make this column take up the entire screen. So let's say modifier, which is a parameter of the column function, equals modifier.fill max size. I'm also going to add, after a comma, another parameter called vertical arrangement. And I'll set that to arrangement.center. Then we'll have a comma and another parameter, and we'll have horizontal alignment equals alignment dot center horizontally, which is right there. And if I save that, now our text is in the middle. So notice this is arrangement, whereas this is alignment. And you might have to add imports for those. Just hover over them and go to add the import. Now let's make this look a little bit nicer with some colors. So we could do that in a theme, but just to get going here, let's define the colors directly within our composable function. So I can set the background here to, let's say, black. We can chain on another function here. Let's write dot background, and we'll add color dot black, or whatever you like. And here I get an error and I have to go to import extension function modify.background. Also, same deal here. If we go to it, we can import the unresolved reference from Android Compose UI graphics. So now it's all black, but we can't see our text. So let's make the text a different color. I'm just going to specify here color equals color dot cyan. Let's say that should look nice. It doesn't matter what order these are in because I've named them all anyway. This is a language feature that you might be familiar with if you've used Python, for example. And here, let's say color equals color dot green. OK, so now we've got our little Hello World program running. But if you're new to this, I think this is pretty instructive. You can see the general idea is to use these composable layout functions. And then you can use various controls from the API to lay out your interface. And the entire thing, apart from the imports, now looks like this. So that's it for this time. I'm going to try to get these videos out roughly once a week, I should think. And until next time, happy coding.